As we begin to wrap up our discussion of control structures in PHP, there are a few keywords that have a lot to do with control structures that I wanted to point out to you before we move on to a new subject. The first two of these keywords that I want to point out to you are the break and the continue keywords. These two words have very specifically to do with control structures in PHP. The third of the keywords I want to show you is exit, which is not really necessarily directly concerned with control structures, but this just seems like a logical place for us to go ahead and discuss it. So to take a look at these three words, what I've done is I have put together three separate PHP blocks, three sets of PHP tags. Each one contains a for loop that just goes through and prints the numbers 0 through 9. If we actually take a look at the output in the browser, this is what it looks like right now. So three separate divs, three boxes there, one for break, one for continue, one for exit, each of them with the numbers 0 through 9 being displayed. Here in the first of those three blocks, the one that uh, I'm going to use to show you the break keyword, what I want to do there is before the actual echo statement inside that for loop, I'm going to put in an if statement. In this if statement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the counter value that I'm using for that loop, i, and I'm going to say if i equals the value of 5, then break. So this is where I'm actually using the break keyword itself. If we jump back over to the browser at this point and rerun it, you can see that that definitely changes the output that's coming in as a part of that break block. Instead of getting the numbers 0 through 9, we're now instead only getting the numbers 0 through 4. Well, what actually happened there? Well, what actually occurred was, as we were iterating through this loop, as we were continuing to execute this for loops body, uh, printing out the number 0, the number 1, the number 2, as we went through it, when we eventually got to the point where the value of i was equal to 5, we at that point executed the keyword break. Whenever you execute the keyword break inside a control structure, it breaks that structure. It essentially causes that structure to execute no more. Because here I'm using the break inside a for loop, it causes the for loop to stop iterating, to stop looping. So we started off with i equal to 0, we then made i1 and printed it, i2 printed it, i3 printed it. Eventually when i became 5, we said break. When we said break, that was it. That was the end of that for loop, which means we never came down and executed the echo, which is why we don't see 5 output in that break section, and none of the numbers after 5 are output, because the loop broke. Essentially, as soon as we executed the break, what we did was we went to the end of the for loop and then continued executing the rest of the script from there, but that for loop at that point was finished. You might remember the break keyword. We actually used it previously when we were talking about the uh, switch case statement. It has the exact same effect there that it does when I use it here in this for loop. It just simply causes the switch case to stop executing once a match was made. All right, moving down to the continue statement then. I want to do essentially the exact same thing. I'm going to put an if statement inside my for loop. Again, checking to see if the value of my counter, i, is equal to 5. This time, if i is equal to 5, instead of breaking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute the continue keyword. Let's look at what effect that has. There we go. You might notice that the continue section here changed, but you might not immediately see what changed. If you take a careful look at the numbers, though, there you'll notice that the number 5 is missing. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So where did 5 go? Well, of course, the 5 disappeared because of our continue statement. The way this worked was we started the for loop iterating. We output 0, output 1, output 2. Kept doing that until eventually our value of i was equal to 5. When the value of i was equal to 5, we executed the continue. Now what continue actually does is it basically says go back to the beginning of the loop and then keep going. So unlike break, which more or less put us at the end of the loop, said that the loop is done, we're going to go on with the rest of the script, the continue is a little bit more constrained. Continue essentially says we don't want to completely stop this control structure that we're in, but we do want to abort the current iteration. We do want to skip the rest of whatever we're doing this turn. So when the value of i equals 5 and we continue, that means we go right back up to the top of the for loop and i becomes 6 and we go on. That in effect caused us to skip the echo statement when i was 5, which is why the 5 never actually printed anything out. 
The last of these keywords I wanted to tell you about then is the exit keyword. Let's demonstrate it the same way we did the other two with an if statement inside a for loop. This time inside the if statement, I'm going to put in the keyword exit. And if we jump over to the browser and take a look, that's what it actually causes to happen. We get the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then nothing else. So it appears that as we were going through this for loop 10 times, when we got to the point where i was equal to 5 and we hit exit, it caused the loop to stop. Well, how is that different than the break? Right? As far as output here is concerned, that appears to be the exact same thing. Well, here's the difference. If I actually go and take a look at the code that was generated by my PHP script, this is what it looks like. Do you notice anything missing there at the end? Inside the div, where I'm demonstrating the exit, we have the little h2 that starts the exit, or that uh, has the exit title in it. Here's where we're printing out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 with breaks after it. Where's the closing div tag? Where's the closing body tag? Where's the closing HTML tag? This might give you an idea of what exit does. When exit, when the exit keyword is used in a PHP script, it doesn't just abort the current control structure. It doesn't just break whatever loop we're in. It breaks, it exits the entire script. Whenever we use the keyword exit in a PHP script, that PHP script is done. At that point, it will execute no more. Nothing else after the exit keyword will happen. It doesn't matter if what comes after that keyword is more PHP code, like with our echo statement here, or if it's even HTML code and is not even directly written as PHP. When an exit keyword executes, nothing else in the script happens. That might seem a little bit severe, but that's actually quite a handy thing to have happen. There's a number of different situations where under certain conditions we might want a PHP script to simply stop, to do nothing else. That very often would then also be accompanied by redirecting the user to a different page. We might, for example, have a script that says if the user submitted invalid values, redirect them to this other page and exit. So we're basically saying, tell the user to go to this other page and make that the very last thing that happens. Nothing else in this script should execute. That's what the exit keyword can do for us.